Like it's a deja vu every year we keep saying oh lessons have to be learned but really are these lessons being learned <clears throat> um speaking on electoral participation in the u.s um i do not have a dual citizenship so i do not vote in the elections but um i have been there to witness how peaceful it gets um most times in the united states when you're even electing the president it's on a well, COVID now made it a daily basis where every citizen is not just one day where all the citizens will pack themselves and come to a polling unit and start casting their votes. It's a um, daily process with, yeah. um, with security. Um, and now you don't see too much, you don't even see police standing at anywhere you want to cast your ballots. And I say that because I understand that in America, the difference between America and Nigeria is more so ideologies when you classify the parties the political parties in the u.s they are, they they are focused on their ideologies what they think for the united states in our nigerian electoral system and the partisan politics that we play it's self-interest that's why you see a lot of people coming today acting a fool out of themselves i was in apc i was getting apc now i'm in pdp now i'm going to get apc just all of that because uh, the leaders that are leading our country are just for their pers um, personal self-interest. Now, um, some key takeaways um, for the electoral process, of which I already wrote an open letter to Mr. President if anybody in this team decides to push it onto him. I feel like the um, situation of this electoral process that we just had um, yesterday, February 25th, um, should be suspended by the INEC. The, the, to announce a winner right now would be very, very unfair to Nigerians who believed in the electoral process. A lot of Nigerians, the reason why you have a great voter turnout um, for this year's election is because INEC had assured us that this year would be about our vote. We also, as citizens, had to educate other people who were not interested in voting this year, that this year your vote will count. Now, seeing all the magics that have been happening within yesterday and today, it's very unfair for any citizen who believed in the electoral process to actually come again to vote if a leader is being brought out with this sham of an electoral process. Now, um, I, for one, think there should be enough vetting. That is one thing the United States does they vet their votes. They do not have a coalition. I don't even understand how the coalition comes to be where within hours we've already declared a winner based on the numbers. You're supposed to vet the votes. At uh, this um, Tom Prince, the same Tom Prince with someone else, if we had a good, um, I would say, infrastructural um, system for our voting techniques, we would have been able to obscure some of all these things that are coming up now. But I, for one, think that this vote, the, the votes that have been put in, need to be properly vetted. The Electoral Act says that um, if the polling agents do not sign on the ballot paper, that polling, um, that unit is void. Now it would be unfair because of people that have not yet voted in my case to see results, and then INEC now voids it in general without actually hearing our own votes. I think some reruns need to be done before declaring a winner. Because if you declare a winner, that person becomes the president-elect. A lot of people now start seeing the person as the new president. So now that person has an influence in Nigerian political system because to the normal Nigerians right now, that is the person who would rule us. So my plea to INEC is to suspend announcing a winner, vet, properly engage in vetting the results. The same way INEC vetted the um, the um, application process when we saw a lot of children, a lot of people, mixed identities, and they gave us that hope. I'm pleading with them that they should also vet this um, results and give us hope. Mm. Let our voices be heard. Mm. Let me talk about trust deficit for a second here with you because you're a young person and it's worthy of note to say that 80% um, of the people who picked up their PVCs and are registered for this election are young people, including the new entrants, um, people who've never really voted before, even though there's a, a, a handful of people who have 
who are more over the age of 18 who have never voted in their life. So great. Um, many would say that young people championed the move, the energy that's in the atmosphere that caused people to come out and vote yesterday. But with all that's happened, it seems to be weeping up that trust deficit sentiment again. What do you think all this does to the psyche of the person who has been so hyped up about this process, so excited that this is the first time in, the whole, in a long time that their vote will count? We saw Nigerians come out. Uh, some people were posting on Twitter, well, I'm bringing food to the polling ut um, unit. Who's bringing water? Who's bringing seats? Who's bringing a canopy? We saw people together. I saw a, a video of a, a pregnant woman who was so exhausted from waiting for the elections to begin and wanted to leave. People volunteered to turn on the air conditioning in their cars to help her to wait while the process you know, started and uh, for her to be able to vote. And that's the um, resilience that we saw displayed. But with all that's happened between yesterday and today, uh, does, it, does it put a dampener and how does this affect the psyche of the average voter? It puts, it puts a great damper in the psyche of any young voter in Nigeria. Um, it's very heartbreaking and I don't think any Nigerian, if INEC is allowed with all of the atrocities that have been done, if they succeed in giving us a leader that was not the said, um, that did not replicate the votes of the young people, I do not foresee young people partaking in the electoral system again. Now, it could be two ways. It could be a new show of force towards the next polls, seeing as, okay, we've learned our lessons and we've seen how they behave, and now we will champion it for the next so, four I'm years. So sorry, four years I'm ago. so sorry to talk over you. Haven't we been learning lessons from 20, 2007 <clears throat> Um, to 2015, to 2019, do we have to continue to learn lessons uh, forever? I we, mean, we, a lesson is supposed have, to help you have... to get better, but oh, we're not getting better, are we? No, no certainly not. Um, we have been learning lessons, but like you mentioned, there was a great number of vote, um, voters' registration. So a lot of young people saw this election as a means to believe in our electoral system. I, for one, had had to preach to a bunch of young people to explain that their vote counts. Now it's very heartbreaking to see that if the young people's votes do not count, I don't foresee them partaking in any election that Nigeria would bring again. Um, it's very unfair. If you look at the videos yesterday, a lot of young people were there. The people that waited to count the votes are young people. These are the people who believe that after counting the votes, it will be transmitted. Now, I guess the transmission point, you're giving a lot of trouble. Some young people still made it, um, made it possible to ground the INEC staff there till they actually um, transmitted their um, results. Some other young people followed the INEC staff to their offices to make sure that they transmitted their results. Mm. That is to tell you that young people want to be heard. They want their votes to count. Mm. Now, if manipulation happens, I do not see young people taking it lightly with the government. I do not see young people taking it lightly with INEC. Mm. I do not see young people believing that INEC would even um, be able to hold their votes to power. Now, there's a lot of petitions right now going on. We don't even know who to petition to anymore. <laughs> but people are saying, maybe perhaps INEC should not be handling our electoral system. <laughs> Me, for one, I would even think, let's look for a, another country. Or better still, there have been different people. Young people are even bringing out different ideas. I'm sorry, I don't know ideas. any country that looks for another country to run its election. So that's, that's out. It's, it's, no, 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 no. I'm putting it to you that that's out of it. We're not having that conversation. Yeah, Nigeria no, has not, to, Nigeria's not, electoral body has to find a way to have free, fair, and credible elections. We don't have another country, so that's out of that's totally out of it. We're not going to have that conversation. That's that's understandable. Good. Um, like I said, other young people, it's just one of the ideas. Other young people have been thinking about, oh, perhaps we should space out the way we handle the presidential elections. Maybe we have a region take on one week, another region takes maybe the second day, because 
focusing on a lot, like like um, my brother um, Fineface said, the security apparatus we have is very limited. The security system we have is very limited. If we said, okay, dispatch these people to Southeast, Southeast handle your election February 25th, dispatch people, people to Southwest, Southwest handle your election February 27th, you would see a different, um, you would see a different um, electoral process in um, happening because a lot of people would now feel that, oh, they feel safe. Like he said, you go to a polling unit where you see some 300 people and um, they're only, they're like six police officers, but then you go to where it has 1,000 people and there's only two police officers. So the security apparatus is literally limited for the election. Mm. We also felt safe because president was also sending military. We could see that the president was trying, but then it also has to boil down to how do we perfect this? Right now, the electoral system, I stand on it. The election of yesterday, can if, if m the way it's moving produces results, the results are not the voices of the young people. Okay. Let me come back to your fine face. Uh, let's talk about underage voting, which was which actually stuck out yesterday like a sore thumb. Um, we saw pictures, we saw a video of a young child at a polling unit. The questions were posed to him. Um, what are you doing here? And he said he came to vote and they asked for his PVC and he presented it. Now, I want to take your mind back to conversations that we've had, questions we've had to ask INEC uh, about, you know, um, underage voting. And INEC did promise us that one of the reasons why they were stopping our registration for PVCs was so that they could clean up the voters register. Correct me, please, if I'm wrong, fine face. And then they also talked about the fact that underage voting was not going to be a thing. But then we saw what we saw yesterday. And this is what um, shocks me the most. The police chief, the commissioner of police in Kanish State did tell us uh, or talked to a TV station um, yesterday saying that um, the children can vote because INEC had given them PVCs. Help me understand this. Well, it's unfortunate to hear that. And, uh, but I think that the police chief wouldn't have you know, made that comment that the child, the children can vote because the INEC has given them PVCs. That, 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 that is not what he should have said. He should have arrested that child and then proceed. I mean, I, and, and even uh, kind of sue INEC if it's possible. But now let me tell you one thing. I'm happy you mentioned uh, Kano State. I have not watched that video. But when you talk about underage, you know, voting or registration of underage persons to vote, what was coming to my mind is how I wish I know the part of the country where this incident happened. And now you've made it clear that it was in Kano State. Now, let me tell you, in 2011, I served as an INEC registration area, you know, center officer. That's a RACO, you no? Know? And I was in charge of registration in Sampara State. That was my national youth service here. And I know what happened when young people that are below the age of 18 came to be registered. I refused to register them. That, that cannot happen because the law that doesn't provide for people between, uh, below the age of 18 to register. It became an issue. From high neck headquarters, I was, I was someone that I should be careful and do according to what they say for my own, to, to pro, even protect my life. You know, it became an issue. And what have you? I removed my face and that happened because my life was important. Because at that point in time, I even know what I passed through, how I suffered, how I was chased because they believe I was working for Jonathan. I said, I'm not working for anybody, I'm serving <laughs> INEC and I'm serving the nation. So those things happen. So INEC has said that we are cleaning up the voter register to remove underage person. How come this one doesn't happen? And let me tell you, most of this cleaning up that INEC come forward to tell us from Abuja doesn't happen in Abuja. Those things happen at the state level. At the state level, who are the people in charge of the database where these things are happening? Before they send information to the national headquarters of INEC to make announcement about possible successful cleaning of the voter register. So INEC know what they are doing in relation to this. And that is because when it has to do with some other parts of the country, the laws doesn't apply. But when it comes to other parts of the country, this same country, the laws apply. I what, have noticed I don't want what to do you, say... What do you mean by that, fine face? You're a national TV. When you say <laughs> stuff like, oh, the law applies in certain parts of the country and doesn't apply in certain other parts of the country, what exactly are you talking about? Yeah, that is why I said I'm on national TV and there are things I don't want to say. But I know quite well that there are... In some parts of the country, there are laws that don't apply. In some other parts, there are laws that don't apply. Now, let me give one example with Afia or Fable. I served in Zampara State. 
and my one year of stay in Zamfara State. If you go to Guso and you check opposite the army cantonments in Guso, just check around there, they are selling Indian hemp. Youths are smoking Indian hemp everywhere around, selling freely on the streets with other drugs. But come to the south, come, just come close to the south. In fact, the police here will arrest you and give you, they will give you some wraps of maybe sand. And the moment you pick it, it means you don't know about Indian hemp. But when you don't pick it, it means you know about it, then you go in for their punishment. But in the south, that kind of thing cannot happen. But in the north, it happened. It, it happened. So if you check the entire voter register, you will see that there is no, or if you check the entire people that voted yesterday, you see that in the south, no parents, nobody can even ask the child who is below the age of 18 to go out and be registered to vote. It can't even happen because we understand what that means. But in the north, because that is their power, the oil company of an average northerner is the election process. So they try as much as they can to ensure that their population increases. So they, 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 they work hard to ensure that the laws are violated by having people below the age of 18 to register. You can imagine a commissioner of police coming to the public to say that in as much as INEC has given voters card to someone below the age of 18, the person should vote. That is not what we are supposed to hear from them. That is a kind of pollution and a kind of a collaborative effort to, to hoodwink the Nigerian people. What about people of the age of that child in other parts of the country who never allow their own children to come forward to vote, uh, to, to be registered so that they can vote? So we should try as a country to condemn what is bad and take action for what is wrong and not allow the law to apply in some other parts of the country than what, what it applies in that parts of the country. We are all Nigerians and we must have to collectively work out this country. That is why I have had several opportunities to move out of this country. I said, no, I have to be here and contribute my own quota to the growth of this country. Because the other countries where others are, are, are when they call it Japan, now, where they are jackpotting to, there are people that have worked hard to make that country to work, and now people want to get there. Mm. I have chosen to be here to make my own contribution to make this country to work. That is why I will not stop in my advocacy that I work and doing for us to make Nigeria to work. Nigeria someday will be like some other countries that are now very, very envious to other people and will all make it work. And the first thing we are going to do is to make sure our electoral system works and the will of the people are able to pass through the ballot box to bring about a candidate that everybody will accept. I want to go back to something that you and I probably disagreed on, uh, and that's, uh, you know, the Electoral Act and the law generally. Because I'm still stuck where a police chief can say on national TV that because young children were given PVCs, it's okay to, for them to vote because they cannot do anything about it. And that's why I asked earlier on that, how many of these law enforcement officers know what the Constitution says? How are you enforcing a law that you have no idea uh, you know, of? How many of these people, you talk about training and retraining. I mean, we hear about police reforms. We hear it. We only hear about this, maybe on paper. But when, when it comes to the proper reforms, are they really done? So again, the average... For example, let, let me use the U.S. Before you're arrested, you have to be properly um, mirandized. And then what I mean by that is you have the right to remain silent. You have a right to a, an attorney. If you cannot afford one, the state will give you one. Um, but in Nigeria, how many police officers know their duty? Because you see, they're doing stop and search. They're doing the job of, you know... Um, um, uh, the what do they call them? The traffic management guys. Um, they're doing the job of the, the road safety. They're doing literally everything but their job. So I ask again: How do you enforce a law that you're not aware of? Well, they may not have been properly trained. They may not have gotten the uh, maximum knowledge of the law like lawyers do. But they know the law to the extent that they can use to enforce it. Remember, the law says that ignorance is not an excuse before the law, or that you are not you know, familiar or you don't have knowledge of the law, doesn't give you any excuse. And the police officers know to the best of their knowledge the laws they can use to address a particular situation. Now, let me tell you one thing that has to do with the, law, the, the, the police officers knowing the law and then failing to implement the law because sometimes it's to their advantage. Now, I asked a police officer, I've had many, many of them, how come that you charge somebody for a particular offense, you know that the magistrate court does not have jurisdiction over the matter. Then you take the matter to magistrate court. And they laugh at me, they say, do you think we don't know what we are doing? When you commit an offense and you refuse to cooperate with us, we charge you to the wrong court so that you can be remanded in correctional center while the matter is investigated. Wow. And that is what has been happening. Wow. That is why every, in fact, more than half of the matters that are charged by the police 
maybe the person that the, the suspect has proven to be be, 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 be be knowledgeable or proven to know his or her right, they charge you to the wrong court and you are sent to a correctional center to go and stay there, just mm -hmm. a way of punishing you. And that is why our correctional centers are so congested today that you cannot even have a correctional center that was supposed to house or accommodate like 1,000 people having at least that same 1,000 people there, but you have like 2,000 people. Oh, congestion is everywhere there. They know what they are doing. They have knowledge of what they are doing. When you see a child that is below the age of 18, even without carrying out any test or on that child, you, you will know. Looking at the face of a person, you will know this person but, is below but, but the police chief said that they can't tell. They do not have the monopoly of knowledge uh, to tell who a child is from a stunt, a person who's got stunted growth. So <laughs> another excuse they are only, there. It, it's only pretending not to know. It's only pretending not to know. Because when you see that child, pick the PVC in the hand of that child. Check the dates on that PVC. That is investigation. Call up the birth certificate of that child. If you do not have the birth certificate, try to know whether that child is in school. What class is that child? Try to carry out some investigation. When you put some of these plus and minus together, you'll be able to arrive at an average age of what that child should be. There is nobody that we see a child that is below the age of 15, I mean 18, that you will not know. It will be difficult for you not to know. And a police chief of his class is very, very experienced. Like the Inspector General of Police told us that this election, he has seen it to be one of the freest in his career. He's not trying to, he's trying to like use our head, not to say that this election has been violent free more than even the 1993 presidential election that produced Abiola, that was annulled. That is what he's trying to tell us. Mm. But now he put it that, look, Throughout his career, this election has been the freest, and uh, let me say he's been without violence free throughout his career. If you look at the Inspector General of Police now, he must be above the age of 50. If you minus 50 years from 1993, you will see that he was already in the police when the incident happened. That is to say, he's systematically telling us that the election this year that we just finished was the best compared to what happened in 1993. Yeah. So now, having made that kind of statement, a man who has that kind of knowledge and have been conducting election and be part of election from the day he joined the force, see now, cannot tell us that those who are working under him that represent him in various parts of the country cannot see a child or a, 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 a child who is below uh, 18 and he cannot be able to say this child is below 18. So they are just pretending. And I think that, look, when it has to do with law enforcement, if the police is determined to enforce the law, they will enforce the law. Now, something happened in River State some time ago. There was an incident like three, four, five years ago, like, like four years ago, that involved the killing of you know uh, uh, people coming from Night BG, crossover night in River State. You may know these stories are available on the internet. When those people were massacred in parts of River State, the police and the security and the authority, they determined that this thing that has happened, they must take action. In less than two months or one month, they took down someone that was suspected to be mastermind of that. That is when police wants to work. There are many incidences of when police wants to work, they can actually work. But sometimes they pretend they don't know what is happening. And that also contributes to the escalation of the matter for which they would have needed a default if they have taken action to address it when it was already developing. Um, I'm going to wrap this up because we're going for the news at four. But I'm coming back to you, um, Nick. What do we need to do to hold INEC feet to the fire? Because it now looks like uh, the onus is upon us to make sure that INEC does right by us. We can't also, because there, there are those who would say that even the judiciary process, you cannot trust that it would give you justice. But then we do have to try. Can we throw away the ba baby with the bathwater? So the, my question again, how do we, what do we do to hold INEC's foot to the fire with all of that's happened since yesterday? I think, um the young people, the youth, um, need to still take this upon ourselves to now help INEC become the auditing firm. Um, the electoral processes, the results are already being posted. Some people, my team is already collating, who are helping INEC also collate. The ones that have um, issues, we asterisk them. Um, we need to be able to call out this um, discrepancies in these electoral processes. Um, and I go back to my brother that was talking about Kano, the youths, we call it the Kardashians, that's Kano, Kasina, and Kaduna. Those are the states that bring up the best magic. Um, I don't know how they do it, but um, they literally perform the best magic because there's no way we are using the same beavers in Lagos that is taking 600 people 
hours. You can see them going on till the night to even choose their leader or put in their votes. But then in the north, you're seeing over 20,000 people completing election in 12 hours. We need to know what type of beavers. Maybe perhaps they can send us those beavers to use um, here so that we can also get ours faster the way they are getting it faster. Anyways, but back to the topic, um, Nigerians just need to have the sense of responsibility now to hold INEC accountable. Um, the world is watching us. The Africa is even watching us. We need to be able to say, no, this is where you people made the error. We are smart. A lot of young people are very much smart to pick up all this information. Mm. The people that are showing INEX discrepancies today are young people. The old people, well, those ones, they are relaxing. But um, young people now just need to create that sense of entitlement to say and responsibility to say, this is my country. This is the last thing I'm going to do for the country towards achieving a good electoral process. Okay. We need to vet INEC. We need to vet the records that they are showing us. Wherever we see discrepancies, we need to put it out and call it out. Okay. And I would plead again with INEC to currently suspend announcing any winner till we are fully satisfied with all the electoral processes in all states that have been conducted. Finally, Fine Face, um, in just uh, a minute, um, we've seen um several leaders uh for on the, for of i mean the free world we've seen um the president of the united states we've seen uh, members of the diplomatic corps all uh, uh, telling us how to go about our elections in a free fair and credible manner and uh, i mean how bad can our electoral can your electoral process be for i mean people from leaders of other countries uh, to tell you oh, we need you to do this, we need you to do that, because this is how you get uh, good governance. Uh, it, it really has to be a bad process, right? So what, what should we be taking away from this? Because for years, these people have been telling us, you need free, you need fair, you need credible elections, but we, we always, always go the other, you know, we always go the other way. Even when they say, this is the way we're walking and we're going this other direction. Um, what should we be learning here and now well, we should be learning a lot of things, um, one of which is our preparations. I need today giving excuse about, uh, you know, one thing not working, the other one not working, and the other one working. They had four years to prepare for this election. It's a child, or a, let me say, a, a, someone who was admitted into university in 2019 with that strike has graduated now, having a degree in a course. So how come I next spends four years planning one election and still has issues? The area they need to improve is the area of logistics. And when they have to prepare with logistics, they have to put in place major, because every year they complain about logistics. Even on Friday, they were still pick, uh, picking materials from the Central Bank of Nigeria when they ought to have been moving those materials to the local government areas where they will be shared. Mm. They, they complain about logistics, they have to improve in that area. Now we talk about electronic, you know, introduction of electronic into our voting system, which is the beavers. Now the beavers is not working, it's failing out. There was the testing of the beavers. They conducted sometime in February, a part of, you know, this month. But you see have a situation whereby a lot of them are failing. We need to improve on that process. Okay. Now we talk about real time. What they told us was that they were going to make sure that the votes, um, the results are being transmitted real time from the yeah. center. Mm. But today we have had zero. This is over 12 hours after election. Mm. We have not seen any good result transmitted on the server. We need to improve our system for the international community and the local people to believe in what we are doing. All right. Well, I want to say thank you. Nicholas Omumere is a youth ambassador and he's a political scientist. Fine Face Dunanime is the executive director, youth and environment. Uh, I want to say thank you so much, gentlemen, for having this conversation with us. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll be, all eyes will be on the National Coalition Center in a few hours uh, to hear from the INEC chairman and all that's been transpiring since last night. Thank you once again. Thank you for having me. All right. It's still the ballot. Uh, we will be back in time to um, join with the uh, National Coalition Center, of course, conversations surrounding what the outcome of these results would be. And of course, if INEC will be addressing some of those concerns and complaints from across the country. And Mary Anacron will be back. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.